getting started with QGlobal Module 3. Welcome to the next session of the Getting Started with QGlobal tutorial. In Module 3, we will discuss managing sub-accounts. Sub-accounts can only be set up for non-subscription products such as the MCMI3. Viewing parent and sub-accounts. In this slide, you can see that the account owner has already logged into the account and gone to the Manage Accounts tab. This shows an example of the hierarchy set up by the account owner for the sample ISD parent account. You can see that there are several users under the main parent account. Also, the sub-account 1 has expanded. If there is a minus sign next to the account, this means it's expanded. If there are a plus sign next to the account, that means that there are users under this account and you're able to expand the drop-down. Any time I want to look at the details of an account or sub-account, I simply click on the account name. To create a new account, I click on the New Account button and it takes me to the next screen. There are many things to consider as the account owner while setting up your hierarchy. For example, will the parent account hold usages for all sub-accounts? What kind of sub-accounts are needed? For example, if you are a large NHS organisation with several areas, do you assign regions as sub-accounts and then departments in those regions set up as sub-accounts under each area? If you are a large system, you may want to think in advance about your needs and contact us about the options available as you get started. Creating a new sub-account. Here is the screen you will see when creating a new sub-account. One of the things that will be crucial is that you indicate the parent for each sub-account you are creating. Many times this will already be populated, but if you should be creating many levels of sub-accounts in your hierarchy, you may need to click on this drop-down. This is what it would look like when clicking on the account detail expansion. Selecting from the apparent account drop-down menu as shown above determines the location and hierarchy of your new sub-account. I would then just click the account that I want to be considered the parent account or I can also click on the account under which I want the new sub-account to reside. Another thing to address is the issue of inventory. If the sub-account is to be responsible for their own inventory, then at this point you must call our customer services team so that they may make a manual adjustment in the system. Otherwise, all of your sub-accounts will see and be able to use reporting and scoring usages that are affiliated with the parent account. This is important because as the account owner, you may not want your various office locations to draw their usages from your parent account. Rather, you might prefer to set them up to manage and pay for their own inventory. As I mentioned, you will need to call our customer services team to make that change. If you don't need that functionality, then they can easily just set up an independent account. Each account and sub-account has one account owner. The person entered as the main contact will be added as the main account owner. Just like in our review of the main account in the prior module, this is where I would set the verification and settings on the new account that I am creating. When data is mounted annually for test scoring, the verification level is applied after the individual has completed entering test data. I typically set mine as optional, but you may have some situations where you would want to set this function to required data verification. Creating a new user in the sub-account. The process for adding a new user to a sub-account is the same as adding a new user to the main account as we showed before. By selecting the examiner checkbox during the creation of a new account user, this person will also be added to the list of examiners in the system. Users created in sub-account. The examiner column easily identifies whether or not the person has been marked as an examiner and thereby whether or not they may be selected as a person that administered a test. Also, if I wanted to delete an examiner, I would use the delete button after I tick the box next to the user's name. Entering data into an account or sub-account. When ready, I could enter data for an examinee into the system. On the home screen, you can see that right now there are no examinees listed. To set a new examinee, I would just click the new examinee button. Also, I am able to see the account that I am working in and change it here. You have reached the end of Module 3 in the Q Global tutorial.
In other tutorials, we will further demonstrate the system and how to do things like enter and save data, run reports, and more of the great functions in QGlobal. Thank you for watching and listening.